paradigm shift. An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. A sermon. Critical thinking. An imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, few egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect, George Carlin and Gilbert style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be to the, the fullest. fullest. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, Draga special we have going tonight. We're talking about TSU, how it got nuked, and why it's not up and running, and some resolutions I have with me. This is Mark Watashik. I have with me uh, Sean Karen, as well as uh, Dave, Dave <laughs> Kelso, <laughs> and uh, we have... Uh, we have Sitting Bull with us tonight as well. And uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves, guys. And uh, we'll go around and then we'll take it from there about uh, our thoughts and opinions about uh, what's going on over at Sue. Well, I'm Sean Carone, and uh, I host the Awakening Liberty Show on Truth Frequency Radio and also uh, appear on Pyramid One Channel 2 Network um, as well as WLIR Australia, thanks to Mark. Uh, much appreciated that uh, my my broadcasts are syndicated over here on these two networks as well. So great to meet everybody live. It's great to have you here. It's uh, awesome to actually get a chance to work with you, but uh, kind of wish the circumstances were a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah, Sue going down, you know, that's kind of, uh, well, it, it's unfortunate for us all because it had a lot of great things. But uh, let's get we'll get everybody else introduced in here as well. Uh, Sitting Bull, why don't you come in and talk uh, a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, my name's Sitting Bull on on Sue Network, uh, and then also I started uh, uh, anonymous collective of, of anons from TSU or Sue Network, and uh, that's known as Synonymous. I guess we're gonna have to change the name now. It looks like, but uh, anyways, and then on Twitter, I'm Truth or Rot Bull. Uh, that's where you can find me at most of the time. Uh, so that, there, there it is about me. Very cool. And Dave Kelso. Hey, it's uh, good to be back on with y'all again. I, I know it's been a while. Um, and I, uh, Sitting Bull, I don't really think you need to na change the, uh, uh, the name from Synonymous. In fact, I think it's it's important that you keep it as that and kind of make it a Facebook group or wherever else. On Facebook, um, I'm running a group called Ref Sue G's. Yeah, a little punny play on words. R E F dash T S U dash G E E S. And um, I created this group so that people from T S U can all find each other. I mean, the main thing I do is paradigm shift and educational comedy, of course. And I've got, you know, I'm on Facebook, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. Used to be on T S U, but, you know. Um, and so far, this group is going. Uh, pretty well and um, I've been seeing you know a lot of people who had previously lost touch um, find this group and you know get back together um, TSU was really great to me I, I even made some friends in person as a result of TSU so you know in my local area so that was pretty cool and um, I also did um, if you go to my um, my YouTube channel, PSEC Documentary, PSEC docu Documentary, and look in the videos, there's a video called TSU Goes Dark, Follow the Money, and um, I, in my opinion, I did a pretty thorough job of kind of looking behind the scenes and following money to figure out the, the best conclusion I could possibly find. And just to make a long story short, um, it just, it seems to me like their investor pulled out suddenly and that is that is what nuked it um yeah, yeah hold on dave we're going to talk a little bit about that but first i want to let the listeners know who don't know what sue was 
Sue was a social media site that actually allowed uh, monetization for user content, and it, it was growing exponentially. I mean, it got up to 5.2 million users, and again, Sue actually paid from advertising revenue to wow. the content creators on your post, just like when you post on Facebook, you would post on Sue, but based on the amount of views you got, the amount of likes, and obviously how many clicks were coming off of those pages uh, from the advertising revenue, it would go back to the user, which was absolutely amazing to me. It was a great format. Uh, it was great because everybody was involved and then all these charities popped up on there as well. And Dave, you know, when you posted Ref Sugees, I was really happy to see you do that um, because a lot of us were trying to reconnect when we saw Sue go down. And one of the first posts that I did talk about, and I'm interested more in about what you were talking about in your own investigation, but one of my first thoughts was, in fact, because I know how Google AdSense works. Okay, I deal with them on YouTube. If they find that your content is not quote unquote advertiser friendly, they will deny you monetization. I was wondering, that was the, my first thought was, hey, did Google pull out? Did AdSense say we're not going to monetize the format basically because we don't like the content? And again, I got I don't want to harp on this, but the fact is, is that they're trying to control the narrative against anything that goes officially against that narrative by saying it's not advertiser friendly. And that is the policy they use on YouTube. So Google is definitely in that realm. And I know for a fact that everything on Sue was AdSense, which is the same thing. But I got to put this question to you, Dave. Why on earth would an advertiser care who sees their advertisement they honestly wouldn't um in my in my investigation that you know people can watch the full length screen share thing on the video but in my investigation what i found is it, it boils down to this it's it actually and now i'm not going to state this is an absolute here's like my little legal disclaimer i'm not you know i can't prove any of this in a court of law as it were but my speculation based on the data that I was able to find is that um, Magnolia Broadband was um, was uh, Sebastian um, Zobchak's investor because obviously a business like this is gonna you know gonna need investor backing. Magnolia Broadband was Sebastian Zobchak's investor, and in 2013, I do believe it was late 2013, um, Sue officially started up. I actually thought they had started up in 2014, but it was 2013. And um, in 2012, um, Magnolia Broadband got in bed with Google. Um, so it's actually worse than content being, um, you know, rejected in the way that um, you stated. I personally think, and this is my opinions, thoughts, and feelings, again, just being all legal disclaimer here so I don't get into any trouble for saying what I'm saying, um, I think that because corporations tend to be corrupt and pull, pull dirty pool, what I think that Magnolia Broadband did is they saw um, Sebastian um, Zobchek's idea as something that is a direct threat to the way everybody else likes to do business. So they pulled the tactic of investing in it, building it all the way up to a point of success, and then imploding it mysteriously, not stating why anything went down. Now, the average individual on the outside looking in, they're hoping, you know, it's kind of a problem-reaction-solution sort of thing, they're hoping that people look at it and go, oh, well, it must have gone down because that business model isn't viable, therefore discouraging others from thinking about, you know, doing similar things in the future. Kind of like how, you know, they, they slander, you know, truthers and stuff in the mainstream media and make them look like whack jobs and whatever else so that um, nobody, you know, takes what they say seriously, or at least that's the hope of the establishment when they do that sort of thing. And this, in my opinion, is exactly um, what happened here. They brought the service to a point of success, suddenly imploded it, and are hoping that other people think, well, we should never try that sort of an idea because, look, that idea failed. They know that it wouldn't dawn on most people that maybe the investor pulled out, maybe that Sebastian was thrown under the bus. So I really think that this was a tactic for the establishment 
establishment to discourage um, new and innovative paradigms and get the, the masses thinking, oh, look at that, look at TSU, that didn't work, so nothing similar could ever work. And from what I've seen, that's totally backfiring. Most people that I have spoken with are under the impression that even if they don't know exactly why or how, they feel that some sort of dirty pool is involved. I haven't well, seen you're, it. You're, you're stating that Magnolia Broadband, and, and people that don't know, Magnolia Broadband is a high-speed Internet service provider. Uh, and according to what you found out, they were an investor or a backer for Sebastian and the Sioux, uh, Tsunami or Sioux. Uh, social media network. If they were an investor, um, what, you know, how, uh, what, what benefit of it would be of them? I mean, in, in, is Magnolia Broadband, you said they were connected with Google. Is that what you're saying? Where? Yeah, they, I'm, they... I, I'm, I'm being really short about it. I mean, I, I, I go into the full long winded details in the video. I mean, I could, I could dominate this entire hour with all the details of it. So I don't want to do that. People can watch the video for the specifics. But basically, Google has power, influence, and control over Magnolia Broadband. So it is, it is my opinion that they were using a tactic of, you know, they saw Sebastian's idea as a threat. And any amount of money that they could have invested in TSU, remember, that's pocket change for corporations like Google. That's, that's a burger and fries. It doesn't hurt them at all to put money into taking someone down so that um, well, they the don't only, have the any The only association I saw with Sue was Google AdSense. That's the only association I saw. Um, and I, I don't know a whole lot about Magnolia. All I've heard is that they are an Internet uh, service provider. But uh, if they're in bed with Google, maybe the whole thing, uh, you know, may, maybe Magnolia is in trouble, too, because of the fact that they invested so much money into Sue based on the revenue being provided by Google AdSense because Sue did not sell advertising like Facebook does. Okay, so Facebook actually sells advertising to advertisers, but that's that's the easy way for you and I, Dave, to actually make money by monetizing our YouTube account and monetizing our websites based on Google AdSense. But if Google decides that you are not advertiser friendly and pulls the thing, I mean, I would think Magnolia is on the hook here too. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't. I don't know how else to explain it except for the full blown explanation that I, that I went to in the video. And that video was, I do believe, 54 minutes long. And we're only on an hour show here. So I'm obviously not wanting to dominate this time slot with all those details because, you know, it's, it's a lot of detail. People can, people can watch the video and look at my findings and decide for themselves. Maybe that, you know, some, maybe if somebody thinks I have the wrong idea and they have a better idea, idea they can they can comment and share their thoughts and and maybe maybe they have the better idea about it maybe i don't i'm not assuming to you know to know and, everything I'm and just they can to the best conclusion i can they can watch that video on youtube yeah i i'm going into full screen share mode on it so i'm literally showing on screen the research i'm i'm literally showing all the data not just reading it and talking about it but showing it so that you know people can see for themselves right you know right in front of their faces what i'm looking at and how i'm connecting the dots as i'm connecting them dave and it, uh when you, i i know that you had it in the uh chat room but uh, can you actually uh, say what the link is for those of us who aren't on a chat? Okay. Um. Okay. Um. To to the video itself. Wow, that's that's an interesting one. Um, it's going to be http colon slash slash www.youtube.com forward slash then the word watch w a t c h then uh, the question mark symbol, then a lowercase v, like in Victor, the equal sign, and then a lowercase e, like in Edward, then a capital T, like in Tom, a capital N, like in Nancy, a lowercase y, the number 5, an uppercase i, an uppercase q, an uppercase n, an uppercase l, then there's an underscore, and then a lowercase o, and that is the link to the video. Okay, I think it would probably be easier if you just give out your YouTube channel. Yeah, which I, I, I definitely already did, but that's youtube.com forward slash um, PSEC documentary. That's P S. E C and then the word documentary and the title of the video is T 
TSU goes dark, follow the money. All right, I would suggest you put that in your trailer heading on PSEC on YouTube. Uh, that's probably the easiest way, just capital P-S-E-C, put that into YouTube, and you can go check out Dave's video. Uh, yeah, there's a whole lot of strange speculation and, and things behind this. It's it's a wonder. It, it's it's no wonder, I mean, that people are speculating. One of the people in Rough Sujis, and I completely disagreed with his video, uh, he came up with a lot of the ideas that some of us had also, what other people had talked about, but then he started to say it was the user's fault. And I completely disagreed with him. Uh, it wasn't the user's fault. Even if there were abusive users, Sue certainly would have had the ability to change the actuaries, just like YouTube does. If you go against Google and YouTube's policies, they will actually demonetize your account. So Sue had the ability to do that. They could have changed the actuaries. If they weren't making enough money, that's why I don't think this was had anything to do with revenue-based on keeping them alive. Or if an investor pulled out, uh, they certainly were making money off of Google AdSense. But again, when you get when you get right down to it, for them to say, for him to say that it was the users or abusive users, I thought was totally wrong, and I thought that was a, a blame game going to the wrong thing and wrong speculation. But you know, I appreciated his input and I entertained it because I, I would say Sitting Bull would agree with me. I think that uh, they could have changed the actuaries. They certainly had the ability to do that. Yeah, yeah, they could have uh, easily, and uh, I think you guys touched on something there. Uh, Dave said something about that uh, it was fear of, and they didn't like the way they did business or the way they did things, and I think that touches on it, on what what it possibly might be. What is there that's different about Sue? It's for one thing, it's the money, but the, there's another thing that's different about Sue. Uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, on all these other sites, I get censored. I don't get censored on, t on Sue. I can put out whatever I choose to put out. I don't, for the content itself, I don't, if I, if I put out something that's copyrighted or something like that, there's a problem. But that's not censoring. You know? Uh, yeah. Totally. And I think there's, I think power is higher than, than the management of Sue had a real problem with the fact that they weren't censoring anything. They were letting every, I mean, look at the 9-11 and how it's censored. And yet on Sue, I could say anything I want about 9-11. I like putting a picture up all the time of, of the World Trade Center with a, a spot where Wiley Coyote went through the walls, crashed into it, you know, just, just kind of a joke. Uh, you can put anything you want to up there, virtually anything you want out there, and, and you weren't censored for it. And or or you could action actually take and if it was adult content label it adult content and folks would actually know hey uh, all right um i'm i'm young or hey i might be looking at something i might not i, I shouldn't be looking at or that's not my thing to look at not safe for work items uh a lot of the other social medias out there like uh, g plus and uh, Facebook even they don't they don't have that uh, ability or they won't put it on because they want to control what your content is and before it goes out well yeah, yeah. sorry for the interruption but you know that that's 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 one of the things that I saw yep and, and again I, I gotta I, I don't want to harp on this point but if I post a video if you look at the policies on YouTube and this is based on Google AdSense for monetization okay if you post a video about 9-11 if you post something about Zionism if you to post something that actually is a controversial political subject if you post something uh, about Israel they will not allow you to monetize it thus there is a direct assault it, it isn't they're not censoring but they are discouraging people from posting content that might have something to do with challenging the official narrative. Yep. But, you know, and, and on Facebook, I mean, I see posts of Kim Kardashian's butt all the time, but you know, I post, some, you know, and, and I should be doing shows about Kim Kardashian. So, you know, it's, uh, and maybe then they'll monetize it. I can post that stuff all day long. Hey, Sean. But, yeah. Maybe 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 you should do something like have a show that says is Kim Kardashian a part of the new world order and then maybe you know 
You might get me to watch it then. (laughs) Well, and for a while there, I was saying, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to mention Kim Kardashian's name in every single one of them. And maybe the NSA and the DHS and these people who are listening to us all the time won't keep messing with my Internet connection like they did yesterday during the show. Uh, We we should keep one thing in mind here. It's something that I've learned a, a whole lot of times over and over and over the last few years. And that is things aren't what they appear. And so, you know, what we're seeing and what, what we're being shown is a lot of times not the truth. And, and I think that probably applies somewhat in this situation. I, I don't think the people we think were in charge at, at Sue were actually the ones at the very top. Uh, Bingo. certainly investors or, or, uh, Google AdSense or, or other, other entities like that, uh, could be there that, that we weren't aware of. So, you know, we need to, we need to keep that in mind. That's where and, they were uh, getting. They were getting their revenue from. That's how every they were paying out. They were getting their ten percent. The other ninety percent was being paid to the users for their content via Google AdSense. That's where the money was coming from. But Sean, here's another thing too. It this wasn't a little corporation. Okay, this had millions of users. All right, so you don't put all your eggs into one investor. There's mo- there's more than one investor. What about the other investors out there? Uh, what happened to them? W- what's going yeah, on with them? They're on the hook too. Yeah. Now uh, I wasn't able to find that data. If there are any other investors, um, I see that. Find, see that. I, I didn't find it in public record. That to me sounds really strange. I agree. Okay, and it does not sound right because if I create a business. And I'm looking for investors because I'm I'm not going to sink all my business into one investor, okay? I I want to you know, if I'm going to have to pay out to somebody, I want to make sure that it's uh, to a few people. That way uh, I can stagger my payments out or in payments in. You know and that's how and and that's how business works, but you know. This just doesn't seem right. Oh, one of the investors pulled out. Uh, it's it sounds like uh, more than just one investor pulled out. Well, they would pull out certainly you know, if the revenue but, stopped. If the revenue stopped from Google AdSense, the investors are certainly going to pull out because at that point they have no way of paying them back. I mean, but even it bankrupted the platform. But even with that, then I mean, you don't sink all your. Uh, all your sources into one area, okay? Uh, you're not going to have just Google AdSense or or, or uh, an entity like oh. that. You're going to go with multiple ones. So what about these others? That's a good point. There there are multiple ad platforms out there, and plus, seeing as T- TSU seems to be coded from the ground up, why why couldn't uh, why couldn't the coder create? their own ad system that Google AdSense can be integrated into, but, you know, TSU is not not dependent directly upon the Google AdSense. There, there seems to be a lot of things that, that didn't happen in TSU that it should have happened in TSU, and that's, that's the stranger thing more than, more than what did happen. The stranger thing is what didn't happen. Well, here's, I mean, here's Sue, another thing I, too. I didn't see, ever see an ad on Sue that wasn't Google AdSense, um, and I was on Sue quite a bit. So, uh, and, and obviously, like I said, Facebook, Twitter, they go out and they sell advertising on the platform, so they're out there, uh, you know, beating the beating the da- doors down, trying to sell advertising. So that's their source of revenue. Um, but again, you know, I would think that uh, Sebastian and Sue would have actually gone out and actually sold some of their own instead of relying on AdSense only. Hopefully that's not what they did because if that's what they did and it got shut down based on them not deciding not to monetize the platform, uh, then obviously Mark's point is well taken. They put all their eggs in one basket. Well, let me ask you something, Sean. Did you ever notice any ad ever that came up that wasn't Google AdSense? Not on Sue. It's all, it was always Google AdSense. I mean, every time I went onto my page, there's usually two on the right side, and there was one just below all of your information on your profile page. Um, they were Google AdSense ads. I never saw anything that didn't say AdSense. Well, then, um, they did put their eggs all in one basket. We also have to remember, too, that 
people like Sebastian, we don't we don't know to what limitation or extent um, his his business knowledge actually is for for better or worse. And he's human. He's a person, and humans can make mistakes. And putting all your eggs in one basket is uh, definitely a mistake. So I mean, I think we got to keep in mind that you know humans were were running this, and humans are definitely prone to error. Yes, yeah. but uh, I, I'm going to go and take this uh, back and put it back on not just Sebastian. Sebastian might have been the CEO, but he still answers to a board. All right? And a company that big has a board, and they have to vote on things. Uh, can we see that information yet? It may not be available to us, and it might not, uh, you know ever be there, public there, knowledge there, but something like that should be asked there were only there were only two two public records for the board um one one member is sebastian and the other member was the ceo of magnolia broadband there were no other members of the board listed in public record which i also found to be incredibly strange and if you look on Wikipedia, and you see who started the company with Sebastian, those other names are not listed as, as board members. So it's really, really strange. Nothing about any of this, um, you know, makes sense other than, you know, the, the strategy that I suggested earlier as far as, you know, a, a, a means of the big boys crushing competition before it can even um, become competition. But I really think that that strategy, um, again, has um, has backfired, and TSU has served an important pivotal role in you know helping humanity um, expand their thinking and to empower them. Uh, one one post I made just two hours ago says, um, "Money is all well and great, but TSU was never about the money. It was proof that people could put down their differences and work together." People who liked each other worked together. People who disliked each other worked together. Complete strangers worked together. We made new friends we wouldn't have made otherwise. For some of us, some of those friends were even in person. TSU set a precedent for what we used to think was impossible. Now TSU is a banner we carry to all other social networks, a symbol of unity, not a symbol of money. TS dash the letter U is now TS dash Y-O-U, TS dash M-E, TS dash everyone, humanity united, powers that be, beware. This is not the end. We're only just getting started. Yeah, I, I, I find it real peculiar, not only what you, you just read there, but the wording of what Sebastian posted on the site when he shut it down. Very it cryptic. Really, really cryptic, really vague. Uh, and what does that mean that what we set out to do has been, has, is completed? What does that mean? Because I don't feel like it was completed. Do you? He said the time has passed, and that's why my first gut reaction was is that the monetization, the ad revenue that was actually funding the platform and paying everybody um, pulled itself. That was why my first gut reaction was. And, and here's the other thing is that most people don't realize this, but anybody can go start a WordPress page right now. You can put a, um, uh, an app on there. You can actually install something from WordPress and uh, you can start your own social media site right on your page and you can monetize that page. Anybody can do this. If it gets to the size, obviously, of what Sue started out at, you need about 50 grand to get a server. So you need a server that can handle a lot of people. And obviously, yeah. they were upgrading that. Anybody can do this. So, you know, and Mark, I, I respect what you're saying about this needed to be a big corporation, but it might not have been. This might have been somebody that just had 50 grand in his pocket, went and bought a server and started a website and it grew from there. And it, again, it was all based off eggs in one basket. I mean, do you think that's a possibility? Because you Sean? and I could do this, Mark. Possibility, <laughs> yes. Probability, no. Because when you start going out and you, you know, uh, get your business plan together, you have to take and uh, go around to people who already have businesses already and say, okay, well, you're missing this and that, and you're going to need to have this to put it together. Um, 
you know, you, you don't go and, and start a business, especially that size, and not have some knowledge. Uh, if, if you did, uh, you know, the lawyers would have took care of you and eaten you up way before that. Because, yeah. you know, there's a, there's a whole lot of legalities when it comes to uh, corporate business. And, and when you start going international corporate business, there's even more to it. And Sue was worldwide. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> hey, Sean, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, can you please uh, tell us the name of that WordPress app and, and where we can find that that information for anybody that might uh, might be listening and thinking, wow, Sean's got a really good idea there. Maybe I want to check that out. Where would they go? Um, it, well, obviously, I, on my WordPress, and, and there's actually... If you search for that, you can search for um, a, a social media site uh, add-on in WordPress. And there's probably this WordPress is certainly not as sophisticated as some of the ones out there. Um, actually, I'm not logged into my site here, but I was going to go search it. If you give me a second, hang on a second. I'm going to log right in here to my. Field. I think it's I listed actually, as sure. a widget, isn't it, Sean? It's a widget. It's, it's a, a widget. widget. It's an add-on. Yeah, because I, I I use WordPress, and uh, it you can. There's tons of different widgets you can use. Some you have to pay for, others are free. So uh, if you have, you know, WordPress, you you can opt to use one of those. Yeah, you can create your own website, create your own social media network right on your own website, and yeah. it's it's done right out of WordPress. And obviously, if you have a little bit more money, you can go to a a, a big programmer who can actually code, which I'm sure is what Sue was doing. But any yeah, of us you know, do this. They, they were. They, Sue was doing that. Uh, uh, Anthony Long was their coder, uh, and they were they were coding their own. But even if they started as a, a business of, of some guy forming a corporation with just enough money for a server, and, and you know it was that bare bones to begin with. The fact is, it's five million plus users now, and that's got some real value to somebody out there. And, yes, and it does. Got, and that's got some real political. Power too. I mean, these well, people are not just on so they, these people are on a lot of other site, social sites too. And mm -hmm. it's also a threat to the powers who shouldn't be. Exactly. Well, and that and certainly could have played into the whole thing. But then again, those powers that shouldn't be would certainly include Google. Also, would that's what I was getting ready to say, Sean. Well, uh, uh, let's say that. let's let's talk a little bit about that because uh, you know, as we all know. The, there are people on the board, and we all know that there's actually one person that's on the board of both Facebook and Google. Okay? And, you know, he's on Twitter's board, too, I believe. Yeah. So, uh, you know, maybe uh, he bought them out, bought Sue out quickly, or bought the companies out that... Uh, were doing the investing and said, "I'm not investing into this, or I'm. If if you continue to do this, you know, uh, I'm going to take and uh, pack my bags and, and close shop on you guys too for support." Yeah. When now, I was, as a, when I was, now, as when a I was, board member, you know that, you know, he, and he's this guy, and you. We all know who we're, who I'm talking about. We don't have to uh, say his name, but. Uh, you know, no, we don't. he he throws into a lot of politics as well, uh -huh. and yeah, so, so there's there's a lot of reasons and things that could have gone on with that, aside from just you know, improper uh, handling of day to day business as a major corporation, because you know, uh, and not just a major corporation, stateside, internationally. And if if it's a funding issue, hey, uh, you know, when you look at NASDAQ and uh, the stocks and that, there's got to be stocks being sold into that as well. And uh, why wasn't the company uh, put up publicly for, uh, you know, sell? Yeah, well, so or even it, so sold. It wasn't uh, traded publicly, was it? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Not well, that I know of. Yeah, I, well, I, I, uh, I researched that a little while back, and I didn't find that this was a publicly traded company at all. However, if there was never an IPO that would have gone out, uh, it would have been a big one. Does anybody have any idea how much f 
5.2 million email addresses could be sold for on the market uh, to obviously yeah. for advertising. Oh God, yeah, yeah. Yep. Because that's what, what he garnered was 5.2 million email addresses and contacts. I mean, that could have been sold for a heck of a lot of money. Um, and obviously, somebody like from Facebook, a board member from Google, a board member from Twitter would have went, wait a minute, we can get 5.2 million contacts here. Uh, let's pull the ad revenue for the platform, shut them down, and take it all. In my conversations with uh, Sebastian Zubchek on, on TSU, he did seem to, to imply that... Um, you know, cert certain people whose names rhyme with Bilderberger did try to um, to make him um, an offer, and he declined. Hence, the uh, the, the temper tantrum that uh, went on for a few months, as far as you know, um, TSU being you know blocked and and all the excuses behind that. Um, Sebastian certainly didn't deny it uh, when when I discussed it with him, and. Um, you know, Sebastian to me has always been the type that if he feels something is wrong or incorrect, he'll say, no, that's not what happened. And, you know, when we were discussing this, he never really pointed that at me. He, I, I, all I said is, you know, I wish I could have, I could have seen the look on his face when you told him no way. And he didn't correct me. He didn't say, oh, no, no, that never happened. Hmm. That's interesting. And I, I, you know, what he said in the, in the cryptic message that went out to, uh, everybody at the Sioux closure was we have gone dark. Stay tuned for what I have next. Now, Mark, you and I were talking recently about some of our theories and the fact that maybe he did have this business model from the get go to accumulate 5.2 million users, which would be a huge, huge amount of money to be able to be garnered and sold on the open market. Uh, and then he was going to take that and start something else again. Can you tell us what your think your thoughts are on that? Well, I, I really think that uh, he may start something else or invest in other uh, smaller websites and designs similar to that. Now, um, here's here's a very similar styled page and um, website. It's called Emzy. Um, the only difference between MZ and Sue, from what I'm seeing right now, is... Can you is spell that? Can you spell that? I-M-Z-Y. Yeah, MZ, I've seen it. Okay. And you can't get on it without a uh, without an invite right now. Yeah, it's it's like Sue. It's in the beta testing. Okay. See, that could so, be another, that could be another and person who what, just started their own social media site on their website. It, it could be, or it could be... Uh, him and a few other people that invest that are going to start investing in similar sites to sprout smaller ones that uh, don't create as much attention but what? maybe a little bit more specialized to the the user okay yeah. say uh, uh, you're into art or you're doing broadcasting like us there would be um, a site that would uh, cater to that or, you know, or something similar. You know, one thing that um, I found particularly interesting about Sebastian's little, you know, the time has passed message and, and all of that is the way it was written. It really, it really seemed to be um, written in a, in a fear-based mentality. What I mean by that is it was written by a human who was feeling emotionally distraught because they just got thrown under the bus all of a sudden. Everything was going great. They were in the process of rolling out TSU 4.0. Things couldn't be better. All of a sudden, the hammer drops. If you look at it from the human perspective, and if Sebastian was thrown under the bus like that, what's his psychological and emotional state going to be, and what kind of a, a letter to everybody is that going to produce? You know what I'm saying? you gotta got to remember people are, are human. You know, well, I'm, yeah, I'm really I, not I, sure about that, but uh, it 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 didn't sound like it came from a CEO that was stepping down, or a, a company that was uh, said, "Okay, fine, you know, we've been in business for X amount of years and time. We've done all these great accomplishments. Thank you for your support." It, it didn't come out that way. It, it, it really didn't, and and that's what really uh, rubbed me wrong about all this. And exactly. you know, 
I, I just want to throw some numbers out at you guys uh, based on what I've seen on my own monetization of my website. Okay, I get uh, anywhere uh, from about a quarter cent to um, anywhere up to three dollars if somebody clicks on an ad uh, based on. And, and I, you know, my website's not huge. I don't get a lot of visitors. Uh, AwakeningLibertyShow.com. Can I plug that? Uh, um, sure, you can uh, plug everything and anything that uh, but, but we're doing the, here. Here's the deal: I, I can make like you know, I, I might have 20 people hit it, and I'm making about a quarter cent. So, you know, I'm making five cents a day. Okay, so at 200, let's 5.2 million users. Let's say in one day, two and a half million users actually hit the site. Okay, I'm just going to round this up to make it easy. Okay, Let, let's say uh, they're getting one cent because. Obviously, people might click on some of those ads, and obviously, the amount of money goes up from that revenue at that point. So, if you take uh, uh, two and a half million people here, and let's just let's just round it out here. So, two five. Hang on, my calculator is not working right. Uh, so, two and a half million users, and let's multiply that by one cent. How much money is that a, a day, guys? Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a day. That's how much ad revenue could have been coming in from those platforms. Take ten totally. percent away from that, wow. and what do you get? Well, ten percent. Well, let's take let's take the ninety percent away. Okay, so, just take the ninety percent away. Okay, so they're still making two hundred and twenty-five. Excuse me, I, I didn't do that right. So two hundred and what did I say? Two hundred and twenty-five thousand. Yeah, quarter of a million. Yeah. So. That leaves uh, 202500 So, um, you know, they're only making maybe $20,000 a day, but $20,000 a day, obviously it's, going back to the people, oh too. Oh, yeah. Mad bank. Okay. You know, that times 30. Okay. That's $600,000 a month. Um, which What's is, the operating? What would you, what would you think uh, average operating expense would be as well for something like that? Nowhere near six six hundred thousand a month. That's for sure. No, not even no and, and when you take and do a contract to take and make sure that you get out with a server, it, you know, if you don't own your own server, which I believe they did have their well, own servers. Sure they probably had more than one of them. Yeah, and you know, if you take that into consideration with uh, tech support and things like that, you know, I I don't think it's going to be all that much. You know. It may it may be more than what we're thinking, but uh, you know, I, if anybody out there that's listening knows uh, about server platforms and things like that, please send us some general information on well, that. Well, I do so actually. that uh, and when, we can last, talk last about last this I a little checked, bit more. Educated. Me, anyone can correct me if they feel I'm wrong, but last I checked, they were actually using Amazon um, server hosting. Um, so I, I think they they paid for a server sitting in some room somewhere at an at an Amazon facility. I know a lot of companies use that. DeviantArt uses that. A lot of people are using Amazon hosting, and I am pretty sure that that's also um, what TSU was using as well. I wonder if I wonder what that costs, and I wonder who's controlling that. Are we going back in circles here to Google AdSense, <laughs> or or the the guy that, the other one that's sitting on the board? Who who who'd you say that was, Dave? Oh, the other guy, he's the CEO of Magnolia Broadband. His first name is Osmo, and I can't even pronounce his last name, but if you just do a search for Magnolia Broadband and go to their About page, you'll see Osmo so-and-such, you know, listed, and the oh. information about him. I went through all this in, in, my, in my video, of course, but just for quick reference. Hey, Mark, I was going to ask you, I mean, do you think uh, that some of these investors, some of the people that were involved, might have just gotten greedy and told Sebastian, uh, you need to change the actuary platform. And Sebastian went, you know what, I'm not going to do that. And he just closed the whole site. Uh, even if they did that, with a company that size and being international, they would have to give him an ultimatum with a time frame. You can't just say, okay, fine. We're going to just take and pull out because of this. Something had to be a breach of contract. And you, we should be seeing something in court. Okay? Uh, for how this went down. I don't hear anything about Sebastian going to court 
Uh, has he mentioned anything about going to court? Or, 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 or TSU as a company being sued or uh, being, uh, or was it something that was settled out of court? I know, I, now, I, you know, I know there was some, through negotiations, there was some sort of... now, now it, you know, a lot, a lot of things happen behind closed doors, but still, there's usually some sort of paper trail left behind from that as well. I know there was some sort of legal stuff happening within their little conflict with Facebook, I, you know, some court stuff. I don't know the details. I haven't been able to find those details anywhere. I know something was going on, but that's all I know. And as far as up up to right now, what's going on right now, I have no clue. Um, guys, it's um, it's it's uh, six uh, forty eight p.m. Uh, Central right now, so we're almost uh, to the end of the hour. I well, think actually, uh, let's uh, let's take a few minutes. We'll take a break because we didn't take a break, and normally I would uh, have a break come in there, but uh, let's go ahead, take a break, and we'll add another hour on so we can talk about some resolution and some options that uh, folks can take and do um, and meet up that haven't okay. been on. Now, we've talked about some issues here about the platform and why it's not there anymore, and now let's talk about no, moving on, on the next hour, if that's yeah. all right with you guys. Do you guys have enough time for that? Oh, yeah, yeah totally. I, I, uh, and I, I think that what we were just talking about, about the problem with Facebook back a few months ago, and and it be, being still in court, that was interesting. I, did, I didn't know it was still in court. Uh, if there were still things going on with that, wouldn't it be... Less I don't know. Surprising. I don't. I don't know if it's still in court. I just. I just said at the time there was some court stuff. I don't know any details, and I certainly don't know any court details about right now or if anyone's in court or why or anything. I'm pretty well in the dark. Yeah, and usually stuff like cease and usually stuff like cease and desist is going to be part of uh, public uh, knowledge and being put out there, especially. You know, when it's something big and corporate. So yeah, and, uh, with and, that, unless it was settled out of court, and, and then it may be kept secret. Right, so, and, and and that would have had to been taken care of very quickly. Well, my and, understanding and, was that Facebook was mad because when you did a post from Sue to Facebook, and somebody who was not a Sue user actually clicked on that post, it took them to the sign up page at Sue, and that's what Facebook lost their minds about. Because obviously Sue was a threat to Facebook, and people were, were jumping ship. But that's what I understood. I mean, is that what everybody else understood? Because that's what I read. That's what I, I realized. That wait a minute, when I, somebody was going, I'm trying to click on your post to see your post, and it's taking me to some sign-up page on another site. Well, that yeah. that that could be the case too, and we can talk a little bit more about that when we come back. Let's go ahead and take that uh, that break. And we'll come back and we'll discuss this more. We'll be back after this, folks. Cool. There are people in most countries who would like to live in the Republic of the United States or the Dominion of Canada where that good auger coal is sold. The citizens of our free countries are the envy of many people elsewhere because of the personal freedom which we have enjoyed. Why, then, doesn't every country adopt a form of free government? One answer is that, unfortunately, there are people and parties in many nations who are so greedy for power that they will sacrifice the freedom of their fellow countrymen to obtain power for themselves. History, even recent history, is replete with such instances. That is why the citizens of the Republic of the United States and the Dominion of Canada must be careful to recognize at its very beginning any movement to steal or limit their freedom. That is not always easy. The man who would enslave a free people doesn't begin by saying, now I'm going to be your dictator. Instead, he probably will claim that he is a devoted supporter of personal freedom, but all the while he will support policies that weaken and undermine personal freedom. Such a man will deny any totalitarian aims, but free citizens must not be deceived by such denial. Apparently, it is a cardinal principle of every sincere totalitarian that he is justified in lying, yet such lies will advance his plan. In these times, no public figure and no party or organization supporting such a person can be accepted without careful consideration. Every public figure and organization must be carefully scrutinized, 
And if their real aims are to limit or to destroy our freedom as individuals, they must be opposed and defeated. The 21st century is the age of information, where empires rise and fall, businesses flourish or go broke, and people live and die, not by the sword of metal, but by the sword of public opinion. In this brave new world, we at the Obama administration have taken this situation very seriously. We care about you, and we want you to be as successful as you can be, so that you can continue to do your part as a loyal, patriotic, obedient, unquestioning American citizen. After several years of research and development, our United Nations think tank has created the perfect tool that will make your victory an assured one. Let us be perfectly clear that we are pleased to present to you the race card. Here's how it works. When someone has a different opinion than you do, their expression of this opinion is a threat to the very continuity of your existence and must be crushed with impunity. To use the race card, you simply respond with the claim that anyone who disagrees with you is a racist. If you are black or Jewish, this works especially well, because your slander can be wielded to directly compare your opposition to slavers and Nazis. If someone happens to be the same race as you are, simply insist that they are a self-hater. Be as absolutely ridiculous in your accusations as possible so that their mind has no time to adapt to form an intelligent response. Interrupt them as much as possible. Ask as many unrelated questions as you can and make sure they are all character attacks and detract from any point they are trying to make. Be sure to also use intimidation tactics that elude to the idea that anyone else who agrees with them and not you is also a racist. Be sure to use as much shaming and guilting as possible. Always avoid any real facts or evidence about any issue. The president himself has tested the race card, and its success is unprecedented and its efficiency unrivaled. For more information, please go online to whitehouse.gov forward slash race card. Together, we can make the world a safer place for anyone who agrees with everything Barack Obama says. As for everyone else, fuck them. They're just evil racists anyways. I'm sick, Willie, and I approve this message. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, this is a kind of a commentary special from Dragus Productions about the Sioux Network and how it's no more. And uh, we talked the first hour about, you know, some of the things that we thought might have happened or could have happened over there because we're all kept in the dark other than this uh, uh, pretty vague uh, paper and... Uh, posting that the uh, owner had put out or the CEO had put out to uh, all the uh, users and I have with me Dave Kelso, Sean Karen as well as Sitting Bull and we've all been discussing this and some of the things that we're going to talk about this hour is going to be about you know some resolution you know and the resolution what I mean by that is hey we're over here on this site now uh, and or we're doing this what do you think about uh, getting enough people together and uh, you know starting our own site things like that I mean, you can come to come on over and tune in and go to the chat room over at uh, Dragus dragusprod.tumblr.com you know and sit in the chat with us up in the Zat chat or you can take and just tune in and you know email us later we'll give out our emails later on 
So, uh, and I know Sean has to leave a little early. So, uh, Sean, you go ahead before you before you leave. Give out your email when you start uh, to head out. You, you can reach me, uh, Sean, at awakeninglibertyshow.com. Again, that's Sean, S-E-A-N, at awakeninglibertyshow.com. Uh, and certainly send me some email. I, what I would like to hear from, and I'm speculating here a little bit based on what I've seen from some other people, is that a $50,000 server uh, garners enough power to probably have 10,000 people on your site a day. Um, so obviously they had some huge servers. But like I said, any of us could start one of these types of sites uh, you know, with a $50,000 server. Obviously you're going to have to upgrade. But again, you know, if you get uh, some users... You know, Google AdSense will do it. But again, if Google AdSense was the problem, if they pulled revenue, if they pulled that whole platform apart by, by denying monetization of the platform, either based on content or based on the fact that uh, they just didn't like it or that they were a threat to the other big boys in the industry, uh, we'd all be facing the same thing as well. I agree. So I, that's where my stand is on it, because like I said, you, any one of us could start our own social media site. I could do it here in 15 minutes. Uh, well, uh, is anybody going to come and join it? Probably not, but you know what? There was, a, there was a site that I used to go to. I can't think of the name of it. I think it was under angelfire.com a while back, where you could actually uh, create your own little social media site as well as like a subsection of their servers. And it would run their ads, and you could do things like that. But as far as the monetization side, it didn't have that. Now, if yeah, you that, go that with the... Uh, I would find more attractive it, myself if yeah. something like that. Than, than, because the nature of what I do is activism and, and things like that. So uh, I would find that a lot better than something that was commercial. Uh, well, yeah, you can, uh, I'm sure. And then uh, it's... Oh. There's a lot of different ways that uh, this could go out, too. And, you know, TSU forums, okay, uh, I don't know who really runs that. But, uh, you know, in there, they're like, if TSU came back um, and it wasn't monetized, monet, you know, had money involved with it, uh, what would you like to see? And some folks said something like Bitcoin and uh, others said, you know, uh, how about uh, privileges, extra privileges, and things like that. Those, those are all things that uh, can go out. Uh, even, uh, you know, cutting the amount of what goes out to the users could have been, you know, suspended and things Absolutely. like that. Absolutely, I, I, I would, I would going. have used Sue even if there wasn't the monetization there, uh, mostly because of the people. Uh, you know, so the people there were great. The fact that they weren't censoring was great. Uh, you know, if they could bring the thing back online without monetization, I'd still use it. Yeah, I would. Same I would here. Too. I, but I, I but I would request it in a way. Anyways, I wasn't there for the money at all. Uh, I was there because it was a a, a free voice. Uh, you know, a voice that that would be heard and and not stepped on or anything like that. So. Yeah, I, I would I would love it if, if it came back without monetization. In fact, when I was in talks with uh, Brian Tigner, the uh, head of uh, support, he uh, he he made a comment that it was hard to grow the platform on ten percent. And I said, "Well, then change it. You guys made the made it anyway, so so, so change it." And I didn't, you know, I, I really didn't get a response from that. But they never did change it either. He did make the comment, though, that they were having trouble working things on 10%. So They obviously had some costs, and Dave, your point about them having, possibly using an Amazon server or a third-party uh, server to support the platform, because a server that would support, you know, even half of the 5.2 million users on at one time uh, you know, we're talking a substantial amount of money. I don't know what, the, how much a server like that would cost, but I would imagine it's in the millions. The 5.2 million number two is a little bit deceptive. It's, uh, there, yes, 5.2 million signed up for TSU. But remember how many there were at one point that were leaving, signing up and then leaving and, and never yeah, coming that, back. Yeah, that's so, why I put that figure at, at half. Let's say half of the 5.2 million signups actually, uh, logged on in one day. 
Uh, that's a substantial amount of income. And yeah, they could have changed the actuaries. They could have brought it, you know, let's work. Hey, we're only going to give uh, 70% back to the, to the user content. Um, so I, yeah. again, that, that makes me question the fact that this wasn't about money. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I, I, I have the feeling that it, there, that it was something more than money, that it was, you know, what, what is, what does the powers that be want the money for anyways? For the power that it brings. That's what they want it for. Uh, I, I think it was a power thing behind this. And, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't discount that at all unless you had had some evidence as to what it was because I, I'm real suspicious of it. it. All of a sudden, a free voice was cut off. Yeah, and that's, and what, that's me, what we just witnessed. Yeah, and and again, let's minimize this for a second, Mark, real quick uh, yeah. before we get into some more solutions. Let's say Sebastian's whole concept was not a big corporation. It was a couple of guys inside of a garage and they got a server and they started their own thing on a site and it grew and grew and grew and grew. Um, and then all of a sudden they lost their revenue source, which was Google AdSense. Um, for whatever reason, again, the powers that shouldn't be, uh, the ruling class parasite said, no, this is a threat to uh, obviously our, our bigger NSA Facebook users and all this other stuff. Uh, and we can't control the narrative. But, you know, if it wasn't a big corporation and it was just these couple of guys, obviously, I think we're going back to where I, what we said earlier. They had all their eggs in one basket. And that's, that's a possibility. I mean, it, it, whether there were other investors or not, uh, there were certainly none that were as big as that, you know. Yeah. Uh, so the other ones... <laughs> I mean, what happens when some raider comes into a company and, and buys up a big share of it and forces certain things and sells off assets and they lose money, you know, yeah. uh, and, and so, he ends up make, making money. So, uh, it, you know, there's ways in business to, to bring that situation about. And so the, the smaller investors that, you know, friends that maybe put in $100,000 or whatever uh, to start it off, they may have been squashed in this, you know. Yeah, I, I would imagine any investors are on the hook too. So, Mark, what are your ideas for more uh, solutions on on how we can keep a free voice out there and and how we can get away from the corporate structure, which is obviously Facebook. They're making four point five billion dollars a quarter off of advertising. Uh, and just to give you guys an idea of what this kind of thing pays, um, and obviously Sue is nowhere near the size of Facebook, but I mean. You know, where can we go and what can we do as far as getting back to uh, taking care of people without these big, huge corporate monsters oppressing everybody? You know, you know, well, so what I think what I think would be uh, a really good idea, and I think that uh, Sue, instead of taking and putting it back into the investors, should have taken and said, hey, we're having problems with this. We would like to sell you, the user, some shares of the company. And they could have done that. They could, they could have offered and offered shares of the company and the folks that would buy into it would benefit by its success or its losses. Absolutely. That's okay. like a co-op. And, and, and why shouldn't? a social media have a co-op. It would be extremely successful, I believe, especially with the system that they had to entice you to come in to sue. Right. Okay? And there are others out there that are starting up that are very similar, and I'm checking some of those out, And but none of them have the, um, have that option. Hey, I'm a, you know... Mm. Uh, I, yeah. I, I'm your user, but I'd like to invest in you too. Yeah. I was I don't involved in, just... a, in a site called Collaborate USA, which was its own social media site, um, and you actually paid two hundred dollars to become a member of the platform, and you did get money back. You got rewards back for using the site, just like you did on Sue. Uh, you also had access to in, in, and to uh, certain discounts, and they had their own store, um, but it never really took off. They didn't get enough users. And the amount of money they were paying out was certainly higher than what their advertising revenue was. But that site was not, they were selling their own advertising. They weren't using something like Google AdSense. Uh, and they are now called Collaborate Nation um, or is Collaborate International or something like that. They're on Facebook. And it's the same type of idea that we were talking about, Mark, which is, you know, starting your own social media platform on your website. 
They, that's what they did. It just did wasn't well, successful. The it's, potential it's, that's there, the p- potential that's there. Look at 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 Sue and what happened with it. I mean, you say it's no, it's no Facebook. Well, in one sense, it certainly isn't, but in another sense, it is. And, and that is, it took five weeks to get the first million people once they opened to the public. Absolutely. Uh, it's that a, says a lot about the platform right there. <coughs> okay. Me? I said that says a whole lot about the quality of the platform right there. Yeah, you know? I, I think what made it such a good platform is not really the money. It, I, I think that the money provided a, a, a vehicle to, to bring it about with, but I think what, what was important was that they insisted on use, the user content uh, being original content and you know that's what they were getting is original quality content from a lot of the users and you know i never it, did, that I, made I, it a better site i think i, I, you, I never did getting, understand what when they said use you know uh original content but people were posting um articles and posts from other websites uh but those didn't seem to demonetize your page no, uh, as long as they were, as long as it, it was, the source was there. I mean, you know, if, you, if you're oh, the source, posting okay. something, if you're posting something and, and it goes to their page and it shows that, you know, you know, you know who it is that put the story out and everything. If you just steal their words or whatever or steal their picture and, and, and post that, yeah, you're doing something wrong. But that's, you know, you remember from YouTube what the, the copyright licenses and things like that are for public use. Uh, you know, I mean, there, there is, Fair use for uh, the public to to use it for to, to teach or to uh, you know to post on social media to things like that. You can use those for that without yeah. violating the copyright. So, well, as that's long as it's a, not that, for that, monetary gain. Well, yeah, right. and even if it isn't for monetary gain, you can still run into trouble, like uh, I did with uh, G Plus, and um, that's another story. And uh, it got me. Uh, not only uh, permanently suspended from G+, but YouTube as well. Because of uh, one company decided to do uh, one thing, and another company off to the side said, that was its parent company, said, okay, well, that's fine. We don't have a problem with that. But uh, uh, G+, said, oh, well, uh, you know, we're not going to, you know, go and be a mediator at the table. We're just going to close you down. And shut me down. Let, let so, me ask you. Uh, uh, yeah. Let me ask the whole panel this. Okay. Would okay. you pay? Would you pay fifty bucks to join a platform like Sue, with the potential of getting revenue back based on your contents? Would you pay fifty dollars to join a, a, a social media network like Sue? And like, I would if there was an option that uh, there would be free uh, a free part as well. Say, uh, if you did pay into it, you would get, like, different items, okay? But if yeah. you didn't pay into it, you wouldn't be, uh, you wouldn't be able to gain any of the, um, return. Or like okay? a co-op, just like Sean was yeah, saying, to where, it, to where if you didn't pay into it, then, you know, obviously you're not, you're not going to get any money share back from the co-op because you're not a part of that. But, you know, the site in and of itself not being, you know pay to join as far as what sean was saying for you know anybody can create you know their own social media site and et cetera and so on you know i've uh, i've had uh, you know some ideas about this whole thing i mean i'm gonna have to write them down more in full in order for them to make sense because some of the details do get a little technical but the main the main problem that uh, that we see here and that that we see all throughout society is the top-down hierarchy structure, the pyramid, you know, you cut off the head, the body dies, you, you kick the feet out from under it, the whole thing collapses down. What, what we need is decentralization to where, uh, imagine something like Sue, but, it, uh, uh, but instead of it being a site, it's um, basically an add-on that you can add into a website. It's decentralized networking so there's no there's no single one hub kind uh, kind of like um uh, b- kind of like the old web rings that you could take and like, invest they're in trying to, they're trying to compartmentalize social media then basically 
Yeah, so basically what we need is decentralization. And I do have ideas for how to make that happen. I'm not a programmer. I wouldn't know how to code it. I just, I just got to sit down and get some time to write it out. But basically, it would make it <clears throat> impossible to shut down once it got going. Because, you know, uh, in, in a hierarchy, you cut off the head, the body dies. But in decentralization, there is no head to cut off. It doesn't matter how many of the nodes on a decentralized network you take down. The network is still strong. And once it's big enough, there's no way to take 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 down them all uh, the, the federal reserve would have to spend literally every every dime it's got in order to take down them all once there's enough you know what i mean so it, it just becomes a force to be reckoned with if there's no head you can chop off to kill the thing well and again if everybody owned the platform uh you know people are in good shape the reason i put that question to you all was because i'm looking at the numbers here let's say you uh you charge fifty dollars and I, I like your idea in there mark is that you have a free side as well um, and in fact, maybe those free side users, uh, based on ad revenue, you know, give a small percentage back to them until they can actually pay the fifty dollars to become a paid user. What? Um, but fifty dollars, if you got ten thousand people uh, signed up on a social media platform at fifty bucks a piece, that's a half a million dollars. I would take and do this one step further. I would say, on the free side, if you spent X amount of time and posting on it actively. Mm -hmm. three months to a year if you're there yeah, for three months to a year minimum, minimum. Uh, it, it would it would bring you up to uh, you know that would give you the uh, ability to uh, gain what someone else would be if they paid to go straight into it right. okay because then it gives them an incentive to stay longer and post actively Right. Not just, you know, say, hey, I'm here. You know, oh, I've been there for a year. Why am, you know, why hasn't my uh, status as uh, from free member gone up to being a full blown member? See, right. you. Right. And, 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 it should and be, it should be the amount of, uh, of the amount you contribute to the social media to decide whether you get to be part of the full member. Or if you stay a free member. It, in other words, if you're just going to come in there once a week, be in there five minutes and then go out and don't post anything, you're not, why should you share it? But people who are willing to, to contribute and make it a good site to, to go on, they should get those, that privilege and be part of the, basically yeah. the owner. Of yeah. Well, you know, exactly. uh, Sue had a, had a really good idea. You know, you have, uh, you do a, a thousand likes a day or, uh, you do uh, X amount of active posts every day, and that shows that you're active. If you're doing that at least three to five times a week, hey, you're an active user. Yeah, you're right. engaged. Okay, uh, but you have to show engagement, and, you know, the statistics come back on that real easy and are real simple probably to take and bring up per mm -hmm. user. And if it shows that, uh, you know, uh, a person has a following of X amount, well, if it's high enough and it's bringing in the revenues of what it would cost for somebody to uh, join, okay, uh, through the paid means, then by all means, you know, upgrade their status. Yeah, I like what you guys were saying, like, a TSU system, and then like once it once it hits like you know fifty bucks, then that goes into the co-op. Then you're co-opted in the first fifty bucks, and that way, in order in order to make the fifty bucks in the first place, you have to be actively engaged. That, yeah, that, otherwise you're not going to get there. That's that was my point. That's how you know because you're only going to give partial revenue back from the ad advertisement. But but again, this whole concept is cool. But if you lose your advertising revenue which is strongly what I suspect happened to Sue. Uh, it got pulled. They had no more revenue sources from the ads. Uh, then, then you're stuck again. So you would have, you would certainly either have to go sell your own advertising to advertisers who don't care who sees the ad, which I still don't understand how Google can talk about advertiser friendly. That's just a bunch of garbage. It's just a way to control the narrative. Yeah, it's BS. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that, that's mind control, basically, is what it is. Mass mind control. 
Not to mention there there are other ad services out there similar but different to ad sensors more than people think. And if they built their system up to accommodate not only Google AdSense but you know any others they wanted to integrate plus having their own in-house ad system, then if they if they did fall and collapse because of what you guys are saying, then that would have that would have kept them afloat. But it does appear as if they put you know all their eggs into one basket, which is very unfortunate. But I would also I would also recommend that uh, once it reaches a certain point, that it would be uh, a third, a quarter to a third of that would be sold in shares on at Nasdaq or even uh, you know any other type of uh, public trading, because then you can't say that we don't have investors. Well, then, you know, there could have been a contract obligation, too. Maybe that's why they put all their eggs in one basket. Maybe they, you know, signed a contract with Google AdSense and said, You're, we're the only ad source that you can use on your site. Uh, and then, obviously, That's Google That's said, a poor business practice. And, <laughs> and, that, and, that and, and, uh, and I'm sure any... Poor business practice. Uh, I, am, I am almost 100% positive that any corporate lawyer that took a look at that uh, that model before they signed those contracts because you're going to send it to a, a, a lawyer who specializes in corporate law and they're going to look at it and say, you know, this isn't a very good deal. You yeah, don't put all your, you know, and, and you're paying me to look this over. And I'm telling you because, you know, my next check is going to come from you as well. Oh, I but want, don't, but you, don't know. you know, don't you know, Mark, no reasonable prosecutor would bring such a case. Yeah, I'm making fun of Hillary there. Yeah, that's what I was, uh, Well, look at it, though. They, I mean, the evidence to arrest is out there, and they're not, they haven't done it. So, you know, well, and, you uh, know I, I don't know. In Sebastian's own words, I mean, he said the time uh, for monetization, more or less, I'm paraphrasing here, has passed. Uh, that indicates to me that something got pulled. Uh, their ad revenue, their their revenue source just got hammered. Um, so does it does that maybe mean that they're coming back but but not monetized? I would hope so. Um, I mean, I would too. I would too. Uh, but I mean, I've got six channels there, so I mean, yeah, <laughs> I'd I, like I'd like for them to open it back up. Yeah, or to, right? here's another probability: What if it's going to be monetized, but they got smart enough now to be like, "Hey, wait a minute, we could use other ad revenue sources as well as have our own in-house advertising and." Maybe they just don't want to out and out say it because they don't want to get people's hopes up. They want to surprise people and be like, we're back. Well, and that's what he kept what saying. Happened. Well, he here's another thing, again. too. Even if you change the type of business that you're going to do, okay, say uh, you're going to change from an LLC to an S-type or a, a full corporate, uh, you, you need transition time. But that doesn't mean that it's downtime. And, you know, I, I don't see that as being part of the case here. Yeah, that, that's the one thing that, that is a, a questionable thing here is that they shut it down. That how are you going to keep, you, you can't possibly keep all of those people. You might keep some of them, but the longer you close down, the less of them you're going to be able to keep. Well, yeah, that, that was my thought, too. It's like, you know, the way it was shut down, how many of those people are going to follow Sebastian into a new venture? So. Yeah, I, I I definitely would go back, but I would be very cautious, and um, I, I'm I'm I would definitely and I will be very vigilant about you know anything that may come up with uh, the possibility that this would happen again. Yeah, one thing that I think is trust very is a big mention problem right now. One thing yeah, that I think it, it is. is. Is is creating a huge problem for some people, and you know, it, it was it necessary? That's what I'd like to know. One thing that I think is very important to to mention in in this instant too, um, you know, let's say, let's say that's what Sebastian's planning to do, and then the point is brought up, of course, of well, you know, the longer they're down, the more people they're going to lose. You know, why would he do that? It's not a smart move. In in my experiences. There's a lot of business people that I've met in my time that are just so stuck in their thinking. It doesn't matter what evidence you show them. It doesn't matter how dumb or 
or not smart or whatever their idea is. It doesn't matter what you've shown them that works. I've dealt with clients like that. They give me the whole my way or the highway attitude and you try to show them what other companies have done. You try to show them what works. You try to show them why what they're wanting to do isn't going to work and they get mad at you. So they go through with what they want to do anyway. It crashes and burns and then they get mad at you when you say I told you so. I've been there so many times. Yeah. Hey, look, guys, I got to run. OK, uh, uh, just uh, it was great talking about this. And, you know, I I it's sad to see Sue go. But uh, hey, Sean, um, what's the name of that? The name of that plug in? Did you ever look that up? No, I didn't. I didn't get in it. There's a whole bunch of them, Dave. Ah, okay. you, all you got to do is go into your if you have a WordPress site, go in there and, and look for your widgets and your add ons um, and plugins. They're, they're not widgets they're plugins. Um, and you can there's a whole bunch of them. Search social media plug in. Uh, and it will allow you to start your own social media page, but obviously you got to have the server behind it. Yeah. Uh, but you know, my my <laughs> my uh, I only have 15 gigs on my my website, and you know that's I'm, I get maybe 20, 25 hits a day. Uh, yeah. You know, but it's it, you know you got to have a big time server. So anyway, uh, Sean Carone here signing off the Awakening Liberty Show. Please check me out on YouTube at Awakening Liberty Show, and also check me out on TruthFrequencyRadio.com every Saturday and Sunday at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you so much, Mark. Hey, anytime, and uh, really good having you on. And with that, I'm going to take us to an early break. That way, uh, those those stations out there that are picking us up can uh, put their own content in. And we'll be back after this. Good talking to you again, Sean. For the last year, Lockheed Martin Skunk Works has been working closely with the Russians to develop the most sophisticated, advanced, efficient, and state-of-the-art anti-terrorism drone weapon ever conceived of in order to put an end to the ISIS threat. We are pleased to announce that very soon we are about to deploy the Jihadist Undermining Destroyer Infiltrating Sentinel Goat Drone, or Judas Goat for short with a futuristic AI operating system and an authentic external appearance, the Judas goat is literally indistinguishable from an actual live goat. Powered by the newest quantum Tesla technology, when an ISIS member inserts their slick willy into the back-end interface port of the apparatus, the Judas Goat delivers a lethal 100 amperes of electrical charge directly into the central nervous system of the offending terrorist, resulting in zero collateral damage. Oh, mm, holy Allah Akbar! Oh, such a hard, exhausting day! Killing little babies and beating women! Oh, oh, oh I need to wind down and relax and get my dick wet! Oh, there's a nice one over there, yes. Oh, oh, come here, baby. Oh, oh, I got something for you. Oh, I gonna stick my scud missile into your little Paris opening there, yes. Oh, here comes Daddy. Oh, you. <laughs> The Judas Goat will then automatically protect its cover and run directly into the nearest herd of goats. With its fiber optic adaptive fur, its chameleon capabilities allow it to change its color hue to match with the surrounding goats. Lockheed Martin strives for excellence in its continued efforts to combat global terrorism. As Vladimir Putin once said, it's God's job to forgive the terrorists, but it's our job to send them to him. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we're winding this down, and we've been talking about Sue and the social <laughs> platform and how it's no more, and some of the things that went into it. I'm Mark Watashik. I have uh, Dave Kelso with me now. Uh, Sean Karen was here earlier, and he had to leave. But uh, we got Sitting Bull sitting in with us as well. And now we're going to start talking a little bit about um, some other sites that we can go to and meet up. Now, I've noticed two sites. Um, people have been talking about them in the 
in the Facebook group that I started, Ref TSU G's. Um, you can find that on Facebook if, if you want to hook up with uh, people you lost contact with on TSU and such. But the two sites, one is called Rabada, and the other one is called Flyby, F-L-I-I dot uh, B-Y. Now, Rabada, for some reason, when I've tried to go to it, people are praising it like crazy, but I try to go to it and the page is just blank. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what's up with that. But Flyby... That, that actually looks really interesting, and it looks like it has a lot of potential. Um, just like TSU, it's all, it's all about um, original content. And, um, you know, they, they, they've got a pretty straightforward, you know, terms of service and everything. When, when you read in there the do's and don'ts and all that, it's written in plain English. It's not written in legalese or anything ridiculous like that. But basically, you know, it's like... Uh, you know they're they're not going to screw you on derivative works or anything. It's you know they're just like if if the content is not is not yours and or you don't have permission to post it, then you know please don't. So obviously, no. like you know you know like one example, like if I was on if I was on Flyby, which I'm not yet, I haven't checked it out yet, but like if I was on Flyby, sometimes I will take you know broadcasts from other people and things and integrate them into paradigm shift and educational comedy episodes in order to promote those people's work well i only do that when i know for a fact that the person says go ahead and distribute it upload it remix it do what you want with it so permission is granted whereas if say someone uploaded uh, a documentary that isn't theirs that the documentary authors were like no 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 we're selling a dvd we don't want you distributing this around and it's totally not yours you don't have permission and then you know you upload it then obviously that's going to get you into some naughty trouble with uh, the people at flyby but they definitely prefer 100 percent original works they're not going to get mad at you if you do derivative works but you got to make sure you have permission to use the derivatives that you're using so it seems pretty fair they're they they're, they monetize they're they're all about original content just like tsu but the difference is they're full-blown multimedia. Just about any any file type, you know, you can you can upload uh, audio files, you can you can upload video files, you can post links. You, know, you can do all sorts of stuff. So um, it seems like it has a lot of promise. I'm actually on it, and ooh, do tell. It's it, it's a lot simpler than what you've actually said too. Um, it does allow you to post other content as well, but the content that you wish to monetize. Okay, you mark that as monetized or not. Everything that you want monetized, you have to mark separate. And it, it's line by line. So that's really cool. Because that is. Uh, I like that. Now, you know, say uh, my Vimeos and my shows that I do uh, for audio or even on the slides, uh, I can take and put those on and I can click the monetization side. And that'll work. Now, if I, you know, take and uh, do a coloring uh, for, uh, you know, some artwork and banner work, or I get bored and do a coloring page with Photoshop, I can post it up too. But I won't check that box that says um, monetization. And I'll also list on there too, content is not mine. But, you know, here for your Enjoy you know, enjoyment. And they're fine with that so far. And I've not had any problems at all. I've been there for about three days now, four days now, something like that. Interesting. And it's, uh, it's quite clear. The uh, images are quite clear when you take and post there. I browsed um, a little bit. The, the profile pages almost remind me of a cross between TSU and Tumblr and, and a little bit of DeviantArt. Oh, which, by the way, Sitting Bull, that reminds me. You told me that you made a DeviantArt account, but you, you never gave it to me. So if you could push that information to me in the I chat box. I, I, my phone's been reset, and I, I haven't even set that account back up. I, I don't even have access to it. I don't have the app oh. on it. Or well, if, uh, if, you cr if you create another one and you manage to keep that information... I, I've got a lot of a lot of demographic on on deviant art and I will be more than happy to promote the living bejesus out of your profile I, I did uh, I did do the uh, join the Facebook group that you mentioned yeah. uh, 
Yeah. I did join that. So. So, um, are you uh, on there as Sitting Bull, or are you on Facebook as something else? Because I need to add well, you as a friend. I'm on there as using my real name, so I don't, you know, I'll I'll give you that off there. Uh, okay. But uh, I I was using Sitting Bull on the account, and they made me stop. So, uh, anyway, unless I sent a driver's license and it said Sitting Bull, I, that, that's one of the things yeah. I like about Facebook. Do, do you but, have? Uh, do you have? Now a uh, here's here's another. Uh, site that I was checking out uh, and I talked about it a little earlier okay and it's called MZ I M Z Y it's fairly new but uh, it it doesn't give you a personal page uh, what it does is you go in there and you can set up your own forum or group okay and because it's all about community so it's kinda like it's kind of like Google Plus communities without having your Google Plus page. And also, um, you know, you can take and go to others and join other pay, uh, groups and communities within that. And it's pretty neat. And it's still in the beta test. So unless you know somebody that's on it, like me, then you can take and uh, get on there uh, until they grow enough to take and get out of the beta testing. Uh, I don't. I don't see them uh, doing anything more with that. Um, now, if you're out there and uh, you're trying to do something very professional and you want to get noticed or you need information about the area that you're in, by all means, LinkedIn is a really good place. Um, I've. I'm on that as well. Um, now, if you're an art, art person or doing uh, any kind of, uh, you know, band or modeling work as well as architecture and things like that, and you take a lot of pictures and it's yours, Ello is a good place. But they don't allow any advertising. If you're on Ello, do not even uh, try to attempt to put any kind of advertising uh, they will, they will lock you down for spam. Uh, what, do they, there... what do they consider as advertising? Like, if you tell people, uh, "Here's my email, here's my Facebook page," do they consider that as advertising? Uh, they can, depending on the person that uh, looks at your your post. Okay, and uh, you know, like the banners for shows and things like that. I don't, you know. I don't post that there. Uh, I'll post the shows after they're done, and I can get, you know, it's okay for that, but they don't really care too much for any kind of, uh, oh, this is going to happen now. Um, promote me, you know. That's that's not their thing. They, In fact, uh, that's one of the things that uh, they're very against, any kind of uh, promotion outside of you just getting noticed for just your own work. So, uh, it, it's, and it's set up kind of like a cross, uh, Ello is kind of set up between a cross between Tumblr and G+, without the communities. But they do have some communities starting up in a kind of a beta way. And they're not real popular. So a lot of people don't go into them just yet. But that may be something that uh, folks that are out there, you know, check out. And if you're there, you know, look look for folks who were uh, on your uh, Su old Sue account. There are quite a few people from Sue that are there that are, you know, especially your artists and things like that. And your photographers. I so know. this is this is L O or M Z? E L L O. Okay. Dot C O. Okay. There's no com, and uh, it's an H T T P S. Uh, and you can't so look at secure, anything it's there. Site, an encrypted site. Yeah, so. you can't you can't go in there unless uh, and look around. It, it's kind of like Sue was. Uh, you have to join to actually view. So that, yeah, that, that was like that in the beginning too. So yeah, that is a downside to this. 
they uh, Elo has not changed that. All right. You can share you can share Elo content out easily to Pinterest, Facebook, and other places. But you know, sharing back is not so always so easy. Um, they don't mind that, but uh, I'm sure that some of these other uh, social media networks will start putting pressure on Ella like they did Sue. Well, but, you know, it's interesting some of these sites you guys are mentioning. Uh, but as for the collective that that we started, uh, the Anons at, T at TSU social site uh, we we have a place where we meet off-site uh, and actually it's just a chat app is what it is but it's it's a secure app and, and we meet there in, in a room and have our meetings there uh, and sometimes just hang out there some of us uh, we do a lot of work out of there we have it off every weekend things like that I think what we're gonna do I'll, I'll probably keep the name just like it is but uh, I think instead of focusing mainly on Sue, uh, I'm, I'm also on Twitter. Is uh, my name is at symbol and then truth or bot bull. Uh, and I think what we're going to do is do our ops, but, but instead of focusing on on Sue, uh, just kind of fire out like a shotgun. You know, we're at 25 members in the group, and so uh, you can do a lot of posting over a weekend with 25 people. Hey, uh, Sitting Bull? Yeah. Can I make a suggestion? Um, as far as keeping the name Sue-nonymous, but while well, simultaneously not, you know, making it about the uh, the Sue platform, which um, obviously is no more, um, I've made an, an image and a hashtag that you might want to use in, in conjunction with this. It's called Sue-nighted we stand. Pound, pound sign, T-S-U, lowercase, knighted, capital W, capital S, Sue Knighted We Stand. And the graphic for it says, Sue Knighted We Stand, and it says, the social network may be done, but those of us who loved it are only just getting started. So it's acknowledging Sue as like a springboard point, but expanding out into other things, other areas, other ventures. So you you might want to uh, roll yeah, with something like that. that. Oh, that another thing, too. Like Another thing, too, about these sites, guys. I'll give you the link. Okay. Um, one thing I, I will tell you when I, when I look for a social media site to take and get information out or just join to be a part of, okay, I look for no instant messaging. I look for no games or other heavy apps where you're constantly being invited. Now, I don't mind groups, to be invited to groups, and I don't mind, uh, you know, being part of, like, communities. If you're, you know, you have, like, a, a group of for a fan page, and you're going to take and get together over here uh, for this specific purpose. But I'm not, I'm not on here to play games. You know, I'm I'm here to get shows and and things like that out, and uh, I know artists as well as uh, other folks out there. They want to be noticed too for other things besides silly games. Uh, if you want to play games in that, uh, you got like plenty of uh, games on Facebook and and G Plus. Stay there. <laughs> if not, and and that's not your thing, well, you no. Know, Start looking around like I did, and that's. I, I I like it when when sites have you know compatibility plugins and AIs for compa cross platform compatibility and stuff. But other than that, I I hate the apps for the games and all the ridiculous yeah, nonsense I, and and things. I don't care for that at all. I think that that brings in uh, a lot of unneeded drama. Oh yeah. Okay, and without that, if, if I could take and switch all those features off. Okay, um, what just happened? Mark was talking, and then suddenly Mark is not talking. Did we lose him? Oh, uh, no, the powers that be jumped in, probably. Do you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. 
Yeah. Yeah, that... Uh, I, when I was... Uh, where was I at? Uh, what did you hear last? <laughs> um, you, you know, you, you were talking about how, you know, the, the games bring in a lot of unnecessary drama, and especially because a lot of them aren't even really free. You know, they're free to a point, and then you have to pay, and then, you know, you got all this ridiculous stuff happening, and people fighting, and this and that. It's just, it's, the way it's set up for the games is not really a productive platform a at all. No, not at all. Especially, hey, if you want to socialize, fine, um, do that. I I don't mind socializing while I'm, you know, advertising or you know trying to do something creative. But well, I, 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 I I'm not going to play. I'm not going to play a mind-boggling uh, game or some sort of uh, listen to flash music off to the side or whatever type of uh, player or whatever they have there, unless. It's coming from me, and I know what I want to put in there, you know. Um, but uh, you know, as far as like, that's that's like my huge turnoff with uh, a lot of these uh, social sites that are around now that are established. Uh, it's not so much that uh, you know, you you can't get rid of it, and people are like messaging you constantly why don't you join this why don't you be a part of this hey i just added you to this group hey you know before you add someone to the group why don't you ask first you know you don't just uh pull them in um it, it, there's no etiquette on a site like that and i i, I like to have uh you know Sites that you don't have to worry about, you know, that kind of, uh, those features interfering with what you're trying to do. For crying out loud, how many people out there are ADD and ADHD, you know? Ooh, wow, I saw that. It's flashing at me. Paper bag. Well, you know, that might have been something taking away from what you need to take and be f not focusing on onto something you need to be focusing on about possible relative or a friend that's hurt or sick, you know. So, you know, if you're on a site like that, that that to me, it just it's it's fodder. If if you want that, then you know, have it as a on a separate site. <laughs> what whatever happened to uh, you know some of the sites that just did gaming? Oh, they they're now all part of uh, Facebook and places like that now. I was just thinking the same thing. I mean, there are still some sites that are independent gaming sites and stuff, but, yeah, it's like, why do you need that, you know, inside of Facebook? Like, I can I can understand, like, if, um, you know, some sites got games or something to maybe have some sort of extensions that, like, allow you to use, like, the Facebook chat in the game or to allow you to, like, post scores or something to Facebook or whatever, but actually having the games literally integrated into Facebook has been, like, the most horrible idea that I've ever seen come across. Well, you know, and, and a lot of people are there for that now only. Now, you know, why aren't they uh, joining, you know, social networks like Engine? E N J I I N E. I think that's how it's spelled. Um, that's specifically a gaming social network. You can to, you can do your little flash games. You can you can have your Warcraft or whatever group over here in the corner, and you you can post your logs and, and your you know your accomplishments, this that and the other per game, and all that there. Not to mention another big concern is that having so many games on Facebook, um, a lot of a lot of kids under the age of thirteen then go and and create fake it accounts on Facebook, and the games are not all they end up seeing. They end up seeing stuff that people of that age have no business seeing, and that it's not beneficial for them to see at all in their timeline feed or whatever. I mean, it's like you know you don't you don't need some 
you know, some 10-year-old seeing an argument between two people about 9-11, whereas both of the people are not having mature conduct and they're both name-calling and, you know, setting these nasty examples and saying all this stuff. Like, you don't need, you know, like a 9 or a 10-year-old exposed to that in their feed and the 9 and 10-year-olds are going on like, I'm going to play the games, I'm going to play the games. So they create a fake account to play the games, but they get their minds get exposed to all, all this garbage that they shouldn't be exposed to until they're teenagers. Well, here's another thing, too. All right. Uh, morality and things like that are country by country. Now, what you and I consider over here to be moral and, and good is totally different than what someone over in uh, Central Europe would think. Or even... E go a step further than that, all the way to the Middle East. Now, what is mature content? Uh, you know, mature content uh, over there could be, okay, if you're big enough to take and be able to do this, that, and the other, well, you can buy a pack of smokes or even some alcohol here and there or whatever uh, because they don't have and limit that. But... Uh, you know, that goes on the uh, the ethics of the site itself. And if the site itself doesn't have the ethics to say, hey, we need to take and uh, show that we have some responsibility to this, then, you know, nothing can be said. You get where I'm going with that. And that, and that's another reason why I don't think games should be put on social networking. Uh, like Facebook and things like that. And that's why I yeah. look for sites that don't have it. That are good social networks that you can take and, you know, we, Dave and, uh, I just met you the other day. Yeah. Uh, but you and I can talk like we've been talking for months because we have, a thing in common. We both came from uh, a site that uh, just closed down, as well as we're both broadcasters and understand some things like that. So we under we have some commonalities. Correct. So Andy grows you know, on you too. So you yeah, I, I mean you too, <laughs> sitting bull. I mean, uh, and Sean as well when he's back. Um, but you won't find out these things until you actually. Get online and, and and check those places out, like Flyby, uh, MZ. Um, you know, I I don't. There's a lot of places out there that we can say, yeah, are good, no good, and and this is why. But you know, it's actually up to you, the user, to see minutes, what's right minutes, for you. Ten to, minutes left in the show, by the way. Just yeah, uh, to put the reminder out. And because of that, Dave, um, let's go around and uh, get everybody's information out. And then if we have any final comments, let's just go ahead and do that. And then I will try to have this posted <clears throat> on uh, out tomorrow or even possibly later on tonight. Okay. And uh, I, will, I will post it to all of you. On the board here, as well as it'll go out on Mixcloud, Ten Deck, and it may even go on to uh, Archives.org. But I will share that out through all my social media that I have, as well as I know all the people that are that have joined me here to do this special will do the same. Dave, Alrighty. how do we get a hold of you? <clears throat> Alrighty. Well, I rarely do email, so email is like the worst possible way to get a hold of me ever. Um, of course, um, I am on Facebook. Um, on Facebook, I'm showing up as David Brian Kelso because Facebook decided, no, 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 Dave, you cannot use Dave Kelso. You can't even use David Kelso. You must use David Brian Kelso. Heil Hitler, the fourth right, commands you so. 
um, there's that. So it's facebook.com forward slash time warrior. Sometimes people ask me, Time Warrior, what's up with the Time Warrior? Well, it's the name I first got online with as a teenager, and I also still use it to represent my music. So if you go to ReverbNation.com forward slash Time Warrior, you'll see some PSEC stuff there too, but you'll also see, you know, my music and things um, that I've done. I'm also on DeviantArt. Um, so um, Paradigm-Shifting.DeviantArt.com. Dot com, so you could find me on there. Obviously, uh, Facebook on YouTube. I am at youtube.com forward slash psec documentary. So that's p s e c and then documentary. And in fact, some people, you know, after uh, after today are actually going to be listening to this through that YouTube channel. I also have a a daily motion account. Um, Daily Daily Motion, for those who are unaware, is a site similar to YouTube. It doesn't have all the all the bells and and whistles that um, that YouTube does, but um, they do do monetization and they don't censor you. They do they do have a terms of service, and sometimes things get taken down by mistake. But their staff is actually really cool. So if something gets taken down by mistake, you can email them and say, hey, this doesn't violate your terms of service. Here's why. They look at it, and it's like, oh, sorry, our bad. We'll get this back up for you. So um, it's really cool. So dailymotion.com forward slash paradigm shift docs for you. So that's paradigm shift, D-O-C-S, the number four, and the letter U. Um, let's see. God, what else am, am I on? Um. Obviously, I'm on Twitter and other things, but you could find out all the rest of that information through the sources I gave you. Facebook is the the main one that is the easiest to get a hold of me on that, and Skype, obviously. But I'm not going to put my Skype out everywhere. But you know, you can get a hold of me on Facebook, and if you have a DeviantArt account, you could drop me a note on there, and and so on. So Facebook and DeviantArt are the two that allow for private messaging and and you know all that to where you could drop me a private note if you'd like. Um, and then, of course, you you can find all of us in the Ref TSUG's um, Facebook group. Um, you know, everybody here who's been on, and lots of other people from Sewer there. So feel free to drop on in and join the party. All right, Sitting Bull, how do we get a hold uh, of you, buddy? Well, the best way right now, I guess, would have been on, on Sue, but I guess the best way now would be uh, under the name Truthorbot Bull on Twitter. Just put in that symbol and then. Truth about bull, and that's I'm I'm one of the truth bots on there. There's about 400 keyboards, so, uh, and that's probably going to be the best place. Uh, the synonymous collective we we don't meet on a public site other than TSU, uh, so I guess that's going to be kind of hard to get a hold of us. Uh, and we're thinking about taking our our meeting place to the to the deep web anyways uh and then we'll just use all of the major social networks to target our post at uh each weekend when we do that so so that we can have a present a larger presence out on the web well you know what's sitting you know. bull let, let's both of us work together to get you a deviant art account up that's a good way for you to remain an uh, anonymous no pun intended and um you know then people can drop you private notes on there and chat and you know do all that other good stuff as well as look at your posts i've been on deviant art for god like 11 plus years now um it's a great site and i could help you get an account on there and then that's a referral that you could give to people to say hey contact me here and then that'll make things easy well, we'll, well, that's something we have to decide as a group, but I'll certainly look into that. Uh, oh, I just meant for you personally, for your, for yourself. <laughs> then, well, I, I may do that. I uh, I did have an account there, uh, but I didn't, in all honesty, I didn't use it very much. Not that there was anything wrong with it. I just, I, I've been pretty busy <laughs> spread out all over the place, so. Yeah, uh, well, um, you know, whatever account you set up on there, you know, if you give me that link, you know, once once you do that, I'm more than happy to not only uh, help you set that up, but also I've got a good demographic on DeviantArt, so I'll promote you like crazy, so, you know. Well, I, I appreciate that. Uh, I'll, I'll end up doing that per, for me personally, I'm sure. Yeah, but, uh, of course. 
uh, as far as the group, we, we kind of, we always decide that to get that kind of thing together. So, of course, that's uh, understandable. It's, you, you know, we have this thing about no leaders too. So, <laughs> we, yeah. Yeah. We, we kind of run it, run it. Each one of us has the same amount of power as everybody else. It's, yep. I just founded the group as well. So they, some people see me as a leader. I'm really not the leader of it. Uh, as the old so, saying goes, anarchy is a world without uh, without rulers, not a world without rules. Right. <laughs> okay, in order for me to get my information out... We don't like rules. Okay, guys. <laughs> okay, in order for me to get my information out, it's real simple. Look up Dragus Productions dot uh, whatever, and you will find Mark Watashik, and that's me, on and attached to that because I am Drago's Productions. So uh, it's been a really great um, show. And yep. we've had a lot of information go out there. Let it sink in. Um, take your time. But uh, do find the people that you networked with out there on Sue because I'm sure that they're on other sites by now if they oh, yeah. haven't been already and inspire. get back to networking with them because you know it was a good thing it's soon Heck yeah. uh, and I, I will miss it as well as uh, a lot of other folks will too and with that I'm gonna close out the show thanks again uh, I wish Sean was here to thank him but uh, Sean's already gone uh, Sitting Bull, thank you for coming in, as well as Dave Kelso. You're quite welcome. And thank, thank you, you for, for joining me. me and doing this little uh, updated special on Sue. And everybody, don't forget to check out the YouTube video. You can just do a search for PSEC to find the main channel, but then in there, TSU Goes Dark, follow the money. If you want the details of who's who, who's funding what, et cetera, and my speculations on the behind the scenes business stuff, then watch that video and, uh, you know, draw your own conclusions. Always think for yourself. Believe nothing, disbelieve nothing, question everything. All right, and we're out of here. <laughs>